Bundled with Turbo and the Hotwired Framework is a cool nifty feature that I like to use called t Data Turbo Submits With. So you would append this to something like a form or an input element or a button element and be able to manipulate that button in real time when you submit it. Um, it listens to a certain back in behind the scenes event for Turbo, which is manipulating stuff and you're able to hook into that and kind of and show some sort of progress state. Now there's the default progress bar that typically shows on the Rails apps on the top of the screen if you're using Turbo, uh, but this is another way you can do it to, to make some better user experience. So I wanna walk you through that in this video. It's gonna be a quick one, but I'm gonna just walk you through how I like to use it and just ways you can extend it if you wanted to. So we'll say Turbo Loading Buttons. I'm gonna do Rails New for that. Create the new app. I'm going to use my uh, pro project called Rails UI. So I'm going to say CD into turbo uh, loading buttons. And I'm going to go to my gym file, open that up. I'll uh, do that a bit later. Oh man. All right, Rails UI. Then we'll say Git on GitHub is where I host it right now. So Git Rails UI and then Rails UI, and then we'll do a branch of main just to make it explicit. And I'll bundle install that. Great, and then I will run the installer. Rails Rails UI install with the colon there. That will fetch everything, get everything installed that we need to get it going. Uh, the project depends on ES build and Tailwind CSS by default. So that is one thing. We remove the import maps. Uh, personally, that's just a opinionated way I'm going about it. Just to streamline getting assets into the app, even though it is a default that we're overriding. Uh, so we'll boot the app. And I'll run localhost 3000. It should kick off your configuration page if you're following along. If not. And so far in the free version, there's two themes you can choose from, or templates I'm calling them now. Um, let's say turbo buttons for the app name. We'll leave the support email there. That's just mostly presentation based stuff. Um, I will use Shepard here, why not? And we'll grab the latest assets for that. Um, it's gonna go ahead and install any templates and you know bundled assets that come with that template as long as well as an entire design pattern library. So if you were to go to this page, you see all these components that come stock with this template. Yeah, common misconception so far is people think it's only templates, uh, but it's actually you know tons of components and everything from authentication to mailers as well. So gonna be adding more to that as I go. All right, let's get into the meat of this. I will go to our routes and boot this up. I'm actually gonna scaffold real quick a, a post resource. So scaffold post and we'll say title string text or content text. And you need to type generator before that. So the G or generate before that, there we go. Now this will hook into Rails UI to do some UI, which is why I'm using it. I don't, I didn't really want to invent too much, uh, spend too much time scaffolding Tailwind in this guide. So that that's the whole point of this, not really just to show off my thing. So I'll go and go to, I already have the server running, I think. Yeah, quit that, reboot it, go into our routes. And I'm going to update it to be posts for the root route. So we'll go down to the very end. It's already got that pretty much commented out as an example, but we'll comment that, uh, uncomment that and comment out the Rails UI default route, which is what you saw when you booted up the app. And I will go run the migration. We got posts in our database. Now we have just a simple scaffold with some UI around it. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel there. Uh, so let's get into the nitty gritty here. The biggest thing you'll need to pay attention to in the views is Hello Hotwire is a free course geared toward building Ruby on Rails apps with Hotwire from the ground up. Visit hellohotwire.com to learn more. The submit action, so typically this would be on a button or a submit element in your app 
where you can hook into this and you'd append a data attribute and if you remember from the beginning when i said turbo submits width is what you would pass and you could pass in just text here so in this case it's going to save i can type saving so if we want to hook into that real quick you'll see it real fast change there so that's so so fast so i'm going to slow it down in our controller real quick in the create action we'll just do a sleep uh, maybe roll roll along six seconds. So um, add one more. I'll, sl I'll slow it down so you can see it a little bit better. Test two or one. There it goes. So it's doing that. Ignore my Grammarly install there, but it is doing something. It's manipulating. It's essentially creating a disabled state and changing that inner text with JavaScript so you can just manipulate that button in real time. It's pretty nice for the experience so the user knows what's going on. There's no redirect happening or anything, so the the progress bar isn't quite there. I mean, it is showing, but it isn't quite um, as obvious as that button, I should say. So this is neat. One thing I've run into, though, is wanting to display more or do more with the UI. So I've found myself kind of hacking this approach and manipulating it with some Tailwind, some baked-in Tailwind stuff. So one thing to pay, pay attention to that I wanted to call out is that when you do submit the form, it's going to have an ARIA busy state. And that is kind of like a, a UX pattern or a accessibility pattern, I should say, for de denoting something's changing. There's all kinds kinds of ARIA attributes, kind of hard to say. Uh, but when you submit the form, pay attention to this element here, and you'll see it has an ARIA busy true. So we're going to actually hook into that with uh, Tailwind when it creates. So here's that turbo progress bar too, if you can see it. Sorry if that's small. So what I'll do essentially is go into our post or our form helper here, pass a class of group. So Tailwind allows you to kind of create a group of things. And it's a little more advanced as far as the CSS goes, but it's kind of like having a selector and then nesting the selector and, ch and changing the children of that selector. So think of it as a parent-child thing. Um, it gets complex. You can have multiple groups. You can have custom group names. I'm just going to go with the defaults so we don't overcomplicate it right now. And I should say this is all built into Rails UI. This this UI that you see, these classes don't come with Rails. It's just stuff that I've added into this library to save time, just give you this this template that comes with the app that we booted up with Rails UI. So that's something to, to take into account. So what I like to do is maybe add maybe a loading state, so some sort of state change in the button itself, different color, for instance. So I'm going to comment this out and go a little bit more custom and I'm going to just use a button tag and by default a button tag inside a form will automatically submit a form so you don't need to really do anything to pass you know the form itself through to it you can pay pass the form like object and name it explicitly if you want to um, it's a little more advanced maybe that's something you're doing if the button is outside of the form itself that's some, one way you could do that that's maybe a little less known but it is kind of a neat thing we won't go that far. Um, the button itself will have a button class. These are components built into Rails UI. That button primary is the red color you see. So this kind of state, this look and feel here, you could do secondary if you wanted to and have a different color. The key thing here is I'm gonna make it a do block so it will be more than just text. And I'm gonna find a SVG loader. I think there's a old school GitHub. Yeah, he comes up first, Sam. Um, yeah, I use these all the time. So I'm going to go and check out his repo. I think I used, uh, what did I use? Bars? Yeah, I grabbed this one. So I just copy this and I'm going to add it into my assets directory. You could just paste that all in here, but it's pretty honking huge. So what I'll do, I have a little um, icon helper in Rails UI. Now you don't need to use this. You can use anything else, whatever you want to do to inline an SVG. Um, but I'm going to just use what I'm used to. So SVG loader here, I'll paste that in. I'm going to remove the fill so we can manipulate it from the front end. And we'll do that again with Tailwind. Um, so what I'll do, there's an icon helper in Rails UI. You just pass the icon. Now you'll need to be explicit about the path because by default it's going to re read from the icon directory here and, as well as the outline directory as far as the icon style. That's just the default. You can customize it. It's in the Rails UI documentation if you want to check that out. But I'll just pass the loader here, and then I'm going to pass a custom path called loader or icons and then loader SVG. 
since we're making it outside of the, the scope of this folder, I need to pass in a path. Normally it would just be loader like so, and you'd be good to go if it was in this folder. Okay, so now we can actually pass some classes to it. Classes isn't a normal attribute. I, I extended it so it could hook into what's an underlying library I commonly use called inline SVG. It is a nice little Rails gem, so or Ruby gem, I should say. I want to make the size of like six and we'll call it um, text white so it's just obvious. Now, one thing that isn't so different here or that will change essentially is the text inside of it needs to render. And then we need a entire div essentially to show and hide this based on that aria attribute. So what I'm gonna do is just have like two divs here. And this is all tailwind based. You could make some CSS classes and do all this to ex extradite it to a component, whatever you wanna do, however you prefer to uh, approach that. In my case, I'm gonna just do it all inline here. So we'll say group uh, aria busy is what we're looking for. And that's actually part of tailwind already. So that's nice. And we'll essentially say, if it's busy, we're going to hide the text that says create post. Now you might want to update this depending on if it's a new instance of a post or a updated instance. So it could say update instead of create, but I'm going to leave that for you to do if you want. And we'll take this and essentially just do that part is already done. Down here, we're going to do the inverse and say group aria busy. We're going to say block and this will be hidden by default otherwise. So that gives us that state. And one more on the button itself, I'm going to say group aria busy. And we'll say like BD black to change the actual color of the button. So with any luck, this will hide when we click on the button. This will show the loader will be spinning and our button state will change to a black color. It will still be disabled looking, so it will be kind of like opaque black. So let's try it. Test, test. So we, we still got red, so I think I need to refresh the page to be honest. Uh, yeah. What's up here? Oh, it helps if you pass the class attribute to the button. So let's do that. let's do that part. All right, so one one change there it goes. A little wonky as far as the uh, state there. Let's check that out. Loader icons loader s fill current is what I need to do. All right, so with that, I think we should be good. There we go. So that's kind of the state I wanted. So it gives you this imp impression that something more is going on than just, you know, nothing. Now, if you remove that sleep uh, statement, it's going to go very fast. So it is one of those things where you, you basically hardly see it, but it will be a change. So a little nice nicety. Um, if you're doing something very taxing, I think something like this makes more sense. But a, a very quick and easy save of, of, of insert to a database, I would I would probably reach for this basic takes text based stuff uh, to figure that out. So hopefully this was useful. I I'm kind of building out components on the other side of this project of Rails UI and stuff of this like this. These little finer details come up, and it is something you. Don't necessarily know off the top of your head on how to you know reach for and, and use in a good way but it is something you could do and extend now doing this for every form in your app might get taxing so something like extracting this to a helper method or some sort of component probably makes sense but that's up to you um i think it ultimately depends on your preference of how you write so hopefully that was helpful and if you have any questions or feedback see other ways this gets used i'd love to see it um, let me know in the comments all right so long for now